This series of paintings, we've got some works on panel that are acrylic based and then a series of watercolors. And all of these are coming out of my meditation practice. So I, that was something that happened gradually over the years of meditating for a long time. It just seemed like that, that started to filter more and more into the work I was creating. So initially I started, and they were works on paper, but I started doing repeated marks. And they weren't always this particular U-shaped form, but it was just sort of a way of centering um, myself, I really believe that the way the artist creates the work, the minds, the state of mind comes out in the work, so it's really important for me to be in that center state of mind so I can project that forward in the work. So hopefully people can pick that up when they see the work. Um, but I started doing these, I, I sort of, I did a lot of installation work for a long time that was based on all these little drawings and things and then I started getting back to traditional painting about five years ago, started working on these panels with these layers of acrylic. So the, the way I build these is I start with a really smooth multi-layered um, primer, it's called gesso, and I sand it until it's super smooth and then I start layering colors and it's this very intuitive process of choosing colors, layering colors, you know, sometimes they're spray painted, sometimes they're thin washes, sometimes they're glazes mixed with a medium, and sometimes I'm sanding. And it's really important to me to get this very atmospheric background. And it's very um, fun way of working. I mean, it's just very playful and open, and I don't really know what's going to happen. So these compositions are not fully formed when I start the painting. That happens after. So once those are on, then there's these layers of clear, and if you've gotten to see them up close, you can see it's, it's actually a really thick layer of clear, and that takes many months because I have to keep layering and letting it dry and clarify and layering and layering and layering. But it almost, it creates an almost kind of glass-like appearance. And then when that's dry, then I start the sort of meditative mark making that happens on top. And sometimes there's intermediary layers of the clear so I'll do some of the mark making and then I'll pour several layers again and then do more so they'll have like this one here has sort of a dimensional feel to it where you can see some of the marks are further back and some are right up on the surface and I love using reflective interference and iridescent pigments and this one in particular I, I'm going to take it off the wall just so you can see because it's um, very interested in really subtle color relationships. And this one, you can only really, I don't know if you can see it as I tilt it. Yeah. So you yeah, can't yeah. see it and perceive it unless you're at a certain angle. And I have a sense that when we encounter subtle things, it shifts us inside. So there's things that are really obvious that are kind of like, pound this over the head in this wonderful way. And there's some things that you'd almost miss unless you really just, you kind of have to maybe quiet your mind a little bit to kind of perceive some things. And sometimes that's a real treasure in life, you know, where you find, I think it's sort of one of the delights of a rainbow, say when you see a rainbow and it's like, you didn't see it and then suddenly it's like spectacular there and it's like this fleeting ephemeral thing. So maybe there's something of that in these pieces. and. So then the works over here on the wall that are um, paintings on paper, these are done on a handmade Indian paper that has this real quirkiness to it. It's not um, a perfected technique of, of paper making. So you get these funny little like moments in here where the pigment just sits and it makes this weird dark mark and then you're like stuck with it and you gotta deal with it. Um, and I kind of like that. I like that sometimes when the materials have their own life and you can't really control them entirely. And I think that's something that happens with watercolor too. These really wonderful sort of bloom effects and things happen. And it's interesting that Marlene talked about the tantric drawings because those have inspired me so much. Um, you know, I was working this way before I encountered them, but when I started to really look at them, I felt like it's almost, I, and because I think they're coming from a meditative place in me that it's almost like we're drinking from the same well or something. And it's coming out in an additional, d different format. And um, those, I think there's some really wonderful things about those drawings is they're entirely anonymous. Um, 
they're, uh, they're meant as aids to um, consciousness or meditation or whatever. And, but it's sort of an internal practice, so it's not for outsiders to know how they use them or what they're for. There's a lot of mystery, it seems, when I read about them that surrounds their use. And even um, the people who've obtained them, it's actually not that easy to get them because they're not meant as commercial paintings or products to be sold or disseminated. They're actually meant for the practitioners to use in their spiritual practice. So um, there's something really inspiring about that. But again, I really hope that these have some kind of um, consciousness effect on people, you know, that you can sit with them and gain something for yourself by contemplating or reflecting on them. So does anyone have any questions about any of the work or comments, anything you want to share? It's interesting on the middle one, um, this one. Mm -hmm. because as I was looking at these, um, I think this had the most effect like a tantric piece. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to your having the sort of <coughs> mandala or this kind of thing. Yeah. But I found that I was fascinated with this because of, that the, of the placement. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I think that's very effective mm -hmm. and very interesting. Uh, can have yeah, that just kind that of little, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you said you tried different shapes as Oh, instead of the little yeah. arc. So, what what other shapes did you do, and why why did why did you end up here? That's a great question because it was an evolution. I initially just started doing these little brush marks because I was actually back when I was in grad school, and to be honest, I was extremely stressed, and I couldn't work that way. I felt like I can't work when I'm stressed. It's just like I have to be calm and focus, so I'm just going to sit here and paint marks. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, like, they started coming out to this thing that was really interesting and pleasing to me. And then after a while, I was like, oh, well, this mark isn't w where it's at for me. It was just, it felt too much like a brush stroke and too random. And I wanted them to have a kind of symbology, but not anything that had any kind of um, literal left brain interpretation, so that it would resonate somehow with us internally, and I think that's the beauty of symbols, is they go beyond, you know, our, our language part of our brain, and I think that's one of the reasons why so many of us respond to art, because we need to also address that side of ourselves, not just the intellectual side of ourselves. So I started, and then I did little crosses, and I was like, no, that references too many things. I wanted to find a form, and then I finally settled upon this form, and um, it actually came because it was, there was sort of a knitting craze at the time, and I was also knitting, like really horrible knitting. I tried to make a scarf and it came out miserable. But I realized like, oh, this is very meditative, this repeated. So if you look at this, it's almost like I think a pearl stitch, if anyone's a knitter. <laughs> and then, but what was fascinating to me, so I started doing this form, and this just felt right to me. There's something kind of, um, it's, it's like a welcoming or um, kind kind of a mark. You know, it doesn't have any hard edges. It's not like, it's just a gentle mark to me. And then I was looking through some drawings from 1995 and I found I was drawing this form back then. Mm -hmm. And it was so fascinating to me that I had done this form, completely forgotten about it, and then sort of re-found it much <laughs> later. So. I think it's fascinating the way our, <coughs> our subconscious works, and that's one of the joys of being an artist is because all this stuff just sort of bubbles up, and, and I like not knowing. I actually really like not knowing, but I also like it when people tell me they know what it's about, because I always, like, if anyone wants to talk to me and tell me what these are about, I'm happy to hear your story. That's really important, right, because everyone has their own reaction or dialogue with the work, and, and if there's any wrong interpretations, and. Um, that's why, in fact, for me, titling is harder, and a lot of things end up untitled, but I'm trying not to title them just so that I can identify them on my computer, you know? <laughs> um, but I like to, to not have to have a title, ultimately, because I think, again, you get to sort of turn off that um, left brain intellectual interpretive side of your mind and sort of have a direct experience with the work. Um, I thought I knew what the marks were. <laughs> and you didn't say it. Where I thought there were breath marks about the breath. Wow. Because of the breathe, because of your meditative practice. So yeah. the in and out. 
was like an art. That's what I thought it was. Wow. That's how I described it. I love it. So the arc to you is an in and out movement. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, talking? I thought it was the breath. Okay. It was a representation of your, the process of quieting your brain and inhaling and exhaling. I love it. Well, but that was my, that, that, I was like, I got this one. I know what's going on. <laughs> There's a Japanese practice, and so, uh-huh, circles, you know what that is? It's, it's sort of like that, but yours are open and theirs tend to be closed, but they don't. But it's this uh, practice where you, with ink, uh, sumi ink and Japanese brush, where you're taking a deep breath, and you exhale it while you make the circle. Oh. And then by the end of your exhale, you finish the circle, and it's about emptiness and birth and death because it's the whole circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, breath. And when you do a bunch of them, you feel really good wow. because you need to be exercise. So they're very similar yeah. to that. So yeah. I, w I was relating to that. Okay, so good. Is I was just. You know, having to do this. I'm glad you shared that too. Yeah, I think it, it is. For me, very relaxing to do those marks, mm -hmm. and that's why I think I'm still able to do thousands. I've been doing them for 15 years. I don't know how many thousands of these I've done, but I don't get tired of it because I think it is the state of mind that it engenders when you're actually doing it. Can you talk a little more about the paper, like your choice of it and oh yeah, the size and like where it comes from and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, so I don't know that much about where it comes from. I buy the art stores. <laughs> but I know it's made handmade in India and it's a rag paper, so it's 100% cotton paper. And I do like the irregularity of it, the non-squareness of it. Um, the, everything to me, I want to have some kind of a human quality in my materials, like a less of a man-made quality. And in fact, it's not as apparent to most people, but these um, these paintings, they have a medium called pouring medium on them, and I like that medium because it's not like a resin. So a lot of people think, oh, that's resin when they see it, you know, that's like just clear. But that material is too industrial and too slick and too perfect for me. It's almost like soulless quality. And so to me, this paper has its own life or its own soul to it because it offers so much. It is a little bit uncontrollable. Like I said, weird things happen with a pigment that you're not always totally satisfied with, but um, I think that's, that's why I like it. The size, somehow I tend to work really small or much larger. Mm. And I seem to kind of just vacillate between like little intimate scale and then more of a body scale. So that might be part of it for me is that there's this sort of it's also very portable. I was telling someone, like, I started a lot of these when I was in New York, um, actually, February before last, so of 2018, right? And then I was there again in February 2019, and I also worked on these, again, and I could just throw them in my suitcase and bring a little box of paints and then paint on site, so. Did that answer what you were yeah. getting at? Yeah, do you tear them? them? Is that your tear? No, that's the decalage. Yeah, so that's, they must, yeah. And square, I'm totally attached to a square format. There's something about that. But I think it's also just because it's just like that central focusing thing that happens on a square. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you said, but what exactly is the ink on this? Is this, color, is this watercolor? It's all watercolor. Oh, so okay. the grounds are watercolor wash, and then I just paint with a, a brush, you know, more concentrated ink. Some of it is actually acrylic, like when you see the ear dust, you know, shiny stuff. Mm. I think only this one and that one have some kind of silvery, pearlescent color in them. So most of them are watercolor. And then what is, what is the pouring medium? What is that? It's just a, a medium that's meant to level and dry and smooth either puddles, you can mix color with it, or I use it like what people traditionally do with resin, which is a smooth, clear coat over the whole thing. Um, I don't know if that many people do it that way, but I do it because I want to work totally non-toxically. And do you know what it's made out of? It's just acrylic polymer. Oh, acrylic yeah, polymer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all this stuff is in, over here is acrylic oh, polymer okay. based on acrylic paints. Mediums are all acrylic polymer. Yeah. Anything else? Any 
other questions. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.